So hello, my name is Vera. Welcome to Breast Cancer Goddess Yoga. And this is yoga practice specifically for breast cancer goddesses who are in, who have got, either gone through the journey or beginning the journey or in the middle of their journey. And uh, I'm really grateful to be here. I'm um, uh, a breast cancer survivor. And I was diagnosed in 2019 with bilateral breast cancer with a BRCA1 gene mutation. And I had the uh, reconstruction and uh, the deep, i sorry, I had the double mastectomy delayed. And then I had the deep reconstruction. I underwent a lot of um, chemotherapy, immunotherapy. And then in 2021, I was diagnosed with uh, the metastasized breast cancer that ended up in my brain. And from there, I, I had radiation and uh, a tumor extracted from my brain and, um, and then rehab. Um, and through it all, I never stopped my yoga practice, which is great, right? To keep doing it, even if it just means sitting and breathing, it's so important to keep it going no matter what, as um, you guys all who are here can recognize. So we're going to start with a just a grounding breath work and close your eyes and we're just going to inhale pull and then exhale again inhale pull and then exhale again inhale and exhale I want you to place your hand onto your belly, belly right here and place your hand onto your heart. And I want you to connect your abdomen to your heart chakra. So this is your root chakra. So this is your root chakra. This is your sense of, of grounding and connection to the earth and to stability. And then your heart is your love center. And when you're going through cancer, and you're going through the cancer journey, sometimes your root is out of balance because it kind of shakes you and you're, you're out of your routine as we were just talking about. So this is a practice where we can get back to our grounding, back to our root and connect it with our heart because in, we can be really hard on ourselves too when we're going through, this, um, through the journey that we didn't do enough or why we have cancer or this or that. So we need to also practice some self-compassion and self-love. And if you're just joining us, just come meet us in this meditation right now. Keep your eyes closed and just begin to breathe. If you are just joining us, just breathe, just breathe in and out. And if you're already in this pose and you're meditating in, on your breath, I want you to continue focusing on your breath as you inhale and exhale. And I want you to see a long line from the base of your spine. So the sac sacrum is all the way at the base of your spine. And I want you to see it come all the way up to the top of your head. And that's all the way to the crown chakra. And that's one long line of energy. And that's also the life force energy that is talked about in Kundalini Yoga. So I want you to see that one long line of energy through your base all the way to the top of your head. And then place both hands now on top of your heart. And I want you to send some love to anyone who's been supporting you through this journey. Maybe it's a family member, maybe it's a friend. Just send that person love. I know that when I was going through chemo and radiation and you know all the, all the things, I had certain people by my side who were really showing up for me. So I want you to send that person some love right now. Just send that person some extra love of gratitude and appreciation. And then allow your hands to mount by your side. Inhale your arms overhead. Take a big breath in 
And then exhale, bring your right hand down and extend your left arm all the way over. Lift and reach. Good. And of course, if you if there's any pain at anywhere, right? I don't I don't want you to do anything that is compromising to you. So if you have any surgery scars or anything, just go. So even if you just have to just bend to the side, that's great. You know, just go where, where your body, because we all are at different places in our recovery and come back to center. And let's take the opposite side. So right arm over, good. Inhale, exhale, excellent. And then come back to center and then clasp your hands behind your back. Inhale, lift your chest, take a big breath in. And then exhale, you're gonna bring your hands in front of you and then forward fold and come all the way, bring your forehead all the way down to the mat. And connecting your root chakra all the way down and reminding your forehead, which is your in between your eyebrows is your third eye. And I want you to connect your eye, your third eye to the mat. And just allow yourself to be humble in this moment, to be teachable. And inhale, rise on up. Good. And we're gonna remove the bolster or blob, whatever you were on. And we're gonna move it to the side. And we're gonna come onto our knees. I'm gonna plant our hands into the mat. And we're gonna draw our shoulder blades up and back and then round our spine. So this is called cat and cow. So inhale, lift your chest. Exhale, round your spine. Good. Inhale, lift your chest. Exhale, round your spine. And then we're gonna take our left hand onto the mat and extend our right arm up to the ceiling. Take a big breath in and then exhale, draw your right arm all the way through and thread your needle, bring your right cheek to the mat. So this is called um, a th basically threading your needle and it's really wonderful for detoxification and for cleansing the body especially after doing uh, chemotherapy or radiation. A lot of that stuff can still stay in the body even years later. Um, so it's really important to do some, some serious detoxing and yoga is very powerful for that. And so twists are wonderful for detoxification. Inhale, come back to center. Extend that right arm up to the ceiling and then exhale. Bring your right hand down. Now let's take the opposite side. So left arm extends, take a big breath in, and then exhale, draw your left arm all the way through. Bring your left cheek now to the mat and holding it here. Inhale, exhale. And make your way back to center. And we're just gonna sit back onto our heels. And we're gonna bring our forehead onto the mat we're going to come into a child's pose. So the pose of a child, that grounding, focused attention to the moment. That's what a child is, right? A child is someone who is, is in the moment, in the present moment. And that is something we can learn from children to be present in the moment at all times. And then coming back, to tabletop. So when fear comes in and we get fearful about our what's going on with us, we can come back to the moment. Okay, what's going on in this moment right now? As you roll over the tops of your feet, make your way to downward facing dog. So here, I want you to do whatever it feels comfortable for you. If being on your knees is more comfortable, that's okay. But we're all at different levels. So we're going to come into whatever pose works for us. So we're going to bend one knee and bend the other. Bend one knee and then the other. And then we're going to step, step, step to the front of your mat. Inhale to a flat back. 
Exhale, forward fold. And then we're gonna bring our feet hip width distance. So your feet are hip width distance. And then take your block or your pillow. And then you're gonna place your hands onto the block or the pillow. And you're gonna allow your torso just to melt. I'm just gonna bring this up just a tad. You're just gonna allow your torso to just completely melt down. And allow your hands to rest onto the block or the pillow. And then just allow your torso to keep releasing, breathing in and out. So you want to feel that stretch along your backside, around your glutes and your um, uh, the back of your thighs. And then we're going to plant our left hand down and we're going to extend our right arm up to the ceiling. Good. High twist here. And then take us to the opposite side. So right hand down, left arm extends. And then come back to center. And then inhale, reverse swan dive all the way up and bring your palms together. Take a big breath in and a calming breath out. One more inhale. And exhale. Inhale, arms overhead. Exhale, swan dive forward. Inhale to a flat back. Exhale, plant hands down, step back to downward facing dog. Now we're going to come into chaturanga. So if you are new to yoga or it's been a while since you practiced, you can bring your knees down, okay? If you're a little more comfortable, you can come to high plank. So we have a couple of variations here. So high plank, and if your knees are down, your knees are down. And then we're gonna draw our elbows into our ribs. So we're gonna draw our elbows into our ribs, and we're gonna inhale, upward facing, exhale, downward facing dog. Then one knee, then the other. Step, step to the front of your mat. And this time we're gonna Bring our knees together. Bring our knees together and sink into your hips. Good, sink into your hips, good. If you're just joining us, just come join us wherever you are. You can, we're glad you're here. Sink into your hips, good. And extend your arms overhead and drop your hips down. Good, so I really want you to focus on drawing your belly button in. So <laughs> I can show you a little of my, my scars here, but you really want to activate the core and your Uddiyana Bandha. Good. Squeeze those thighs together. Good. Take a big breath in and then exhale forward fold. Again, inhale to a flat back so your back is nice and flat. And then exhale, bring your hands down, step back to a downward facing dog. Yoga is combining movement with breath. So I really want you to have intentional breathing. So when your mind starts going, just coming back to the breath. Glide into high plank or come onto your knees. Remember, we have those two variations. So glide into high plank. I'll show you the, my knees. I just need to bring it down just a tad. So this is high plank and then knees down. And then we can draw our elbows in low plank. Inhale, upward facing. And then from here, I want you to look for, to the right. So look to the right and then look to the left. And then now I want you to sit back onto your heels, coming back into child's pose. So bring your forehead to the mat and coming back to the present moment, bringing your third eye onto the mat. Grounding down in that energy. And I want you to think about something that you're grateful for. I want you to think, think about something that you're grateful for right now in this moment. In the beginning of this practice, we started with gratitude to the someone who's been helping us through our journey. Maybe someone who's been extra, you know, supportive. Um, right now, I want you to think about something you're grateful for. So be grateful for your friends, your family, the support you're getting. Um, having a warm bed at night, you know, these are all things to be, to be grateful for food, 
um, that we're in a safe country right now. Not, no, nothing crazy is happening to us. Um, so coming to gratitude. And then when you're ready, making your way to tabletop. And then we're just going to fold our right side of our mat over. So fold the right side of your mat over. And if you don't have your mat, just, you know, maybe if you have a towel or something, you can, or a pillow, just in case you, um, your knees are sensitive, okay? And then we're gonna extend our left leg back, extend your right arm forward, and we're gonna lift, 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 holding it here. So here we really wanna activate the core and extend our right hand, left leg, lift, 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 holding it here. For four, three, two, one. Now I want you to bring your right uh, elbow to your left knee, holding it here, and then extend. Good. Touch and extend. Again, we're all at different places. So maybe this is a place where you just stay right now and you can bring it down. If you are still like, having scars or whatever, do what, do, do what works for you. So touch and then extend. And then lower down. Again, we're all at different places. I'm, even, even when I had my scars, I still did some light yoga but it was very moderate, right? It was very moderate. Maybe I just stayed like this, right? The, just like this to build some strength. I didn't necessarily do this, right? So you have to do what works for you, all right? Let's take the opposite side. Listen to your body. Let's take the opposite side. So we're now we're gonna extend the right leg back, extend the left arm forward, holding it here. Good, just nice and strong. Activate that core. Right, activate that core and draw the left elbow to the right knee and extend and touch and extend and touch and extend and lower down. Good. Roll over tops of feet, come into downward facing dog. Step, step, step to the front of your mat. Again, we're gonna glue our feet together, inhale, and come into Ukatasana chair pose. Let me just lift up my camera again. Good, you got it. Yes, sink into those hips. Nice, ladies. Good. Now bring your palms together and straighten your legs. Shake it out a little bit. Good. Grab a, grab a little sip of water. Again, water is very good for, again, detox. Keep drinking lots of water. I highly recommend lemon oil or lemon, squeezing a lemon and putting it in your water. That's really good for detoxing uh, the liver uh, to help with getting the chemo and the radiation out of the body. So inhaling, I mean, drinking lots of water is very important. Mm -hmm. Okay, moving on. Inhale, arms overhead. Exhale, swan dive forward. Inhale, toe flat back. Exhale, plant hand, step back. Downward facing dog. Right leg extends, open up your right thigh. So inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale, step through to warrior one. So your back foot is at a 45 degree angle. 45 degree angle. Yeah, let me just fix my, got to find out a better, got to push this back a little bit more. There, that's better. <clears throat> so coming, keep bending into that right thigh. Good. And then open up to warrior two. Inhale, reverse your warrior. And then exhale, right elbow to the right thigh. And then inhale, reverse. Exhale, right elbow, right thigh. One more time, inhale, reverse. And then exhale, windmill down and come into runner's lunge. So that means your back heel, the left side is lifted. And then we're gonna bring our left knee down and we're gonna extend our right leg long. And I want you to point and flex your right foot, point and flex your right foot. Point and flex your right foot. 
and then make your way to runners and bring your left hand down and extend your right arm up to the ceiling. Good. Inhale, exhale. Bring your right hand behind you. And then bring your right hand down and then step, step to the front of your mat. Inhale to a flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Step back, downward facing dog. Now we're gonna lift the left side, right? So we did the right before, now we're gonna bend our left knee. Good. And then step through to warrior one. So remember your back heel is at a 45 degree and you're inhaling, arms up. Good. And then open up to warrior two. Inhale, reverse your warrior. Exhale, left elbow, left thigh. Inhale, reverse your warrior. Exhale, left elbow, left thigh. Hi, welcome. So glad to see you. If you're just joining us, just come into warrior two. Wherever you are, just come into warrior two. And then inhale, reverse. Exhale, windmill down, coming into runner's lunge. If you're just joining us, just come right into it. Doesn't matter, you can just come right into it. Come into runner's lunge. And then we're gonna bring our right knee down, top of the right foot on the mat and extend the left leg. And then we're just gonna point and flex the left foot. Point and flex. Point and flex. Point and flex. Now come back into runners. Bring your right hand down, extend the left arm up to the ceiling. Take a big breath in and then bring your left hand down, step, step to the front of your mat. Inhale to a flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Sink your hips low, make your way into Ukatasana, chair pose. Good, sink a little bit lower and come right on up. Shake it out, shake it out. All right, let's take some standing poses. So we're gonna, we're gonna focus on balance and concentration. So again, this is really important as we move through our yoga practice and then our mindfulness work, balancing poses are really powerful. I love um, you know, using a balancing oil like balance is really great or any sort of tree oils, okay? And then you can just rub your palms together and just create some heat and then place it on the back of your neck and just give yourself a nice little massage. So, so much of our journey is all about connecting with our, ourselves and giving ourselves some self-care, right? <laughs> you know, that's the ultimate form of love is by self-care. So that's what yoga is all about, by giving ourselves that self-care. And so you're doing exactly what you need to do for yourself this morning by taking that time. So we're gonna set up for tree pose. So we're gonna draw, okay, so focus in front of you, find a point that's not moving. And we're gonna draw our right foot into our left thigh. So if you need to hold onto a chair or something like that, that's fine. Just find that point that's unmo unmovable and draw your right foot into your left thigh. And here you wanna keep pressing that right foot into your left thigh. Keep drawing your pelvis, tuck your pelvis in, Uddiyata Bandha, so this is your root lock, and your hands are in prayer. Good, holding it here. And then bring your hands to your hips. Good, and then we're gonna kick our right foot out, holding it here for three, two, one, and then lower down. So that helps activate our core. So a lot of times when we're going through breast cancer or whatever, we've, um, our core becomes pretty weak because we do a lot of like lying down in bed during chemo um, and, and reconstruction. So this is a great way to build your core back. And that's essentially what I'm doing as well because when I had the reconstruction in my brain, I lost actual control of my left side. So I had to go to rehab last year. Um, so I'm retraining my body and building up that, that muscle memory again. So that's, so if you're feeling, if you're struggling with the muscle memory, just keep doing this and it'll get better. All right, let's take the opposite side. So left foot goes into the right side 
and bring your palms together. Good. And then when you're ready, extend your arms overhead and drop your shoulders. Good. Stay focused. And then bring your hands to your hips and then kick your left foot out now. And oh, sorry, hold it there for three, two, and one. Release. Shake it out. Now we're going to do dancer's pose. So dancer's pose, if you have any um, stitches or anything, because I, I mean, I had trouble with dancers for a little bit because you can see my scar goes from here to here. So sometimes dancer was a really not an easy one because you're doing this kind of action, right? So I want you to um, go with whatever works for you. So we're just gonna do a couple variations. So the first variation is extend your left arm and catch the inside of your right foot with your right hand. So this is great, just stay here. If you have any stitches or scars, this is a great place to stay. If you are free to move, then begin to kick your right foot into your right hand. And we're gonna lift and kick for four, three, for two, and one, and come back to center and shake it up. Good, let's take the opposite side. So again, couple variations, right arm lifts. This is where you're at right now. This is beautiful, because this is a great stretch for your left thigh. And if you'd like to kick it up a little bit more, begin to kick your left foot into your left hand. Sorry, left foot, yeah, left foot into your left hand. Lift and kick for four, for three, for two, and one. Woo. Really, shake it out. <laughs> okay, we're gonna do one more standing pose. So sink into your hips. So you're gonna bend your knees, okay? And you're gonna wrap your right arm underneath your left. Wrap your right, so right arm under, and then we're gonna lift our right foot over our left, okay? So we're gonna sink into our hips, holding it here for four, three, for two, and one. Release. Shake it out. So that pose is called eagle pose, and it works all the muscles. So it's a very intense pose. So if you feel like out of breath after it, that's totally normal. <laughs> okay, let's try that on the opposite side. So bend your knees, lift your left foot over, and your left arm under. Holding it here for four. Squeeze everything for three. Holding it here for two and release, shake it out. Excellent ladies, very, very nice. So we're gonna inhale, arms overhead. Exhale, swan dive forward. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, plant your hands down, step back, downward facing dog. And we're gonna glide into high plank. And we're gonna bring our knees down. If it's too much for you, you can bring your knees down, otherwise, we're gonna draw our elbows into our ribs and lower down for four, for three, for two, and lower all the way down onto your stomach. If this is uncomfortable at all, do whatever you need to do. Even if it's like modification, you can be on your back. Don't strain yourself, okay? So from here, we're gonna allow our hands to melt to our side and we're gonna bring our left cheek to the mat. So you wanna bring your left cheek to the mat and you just wanna hang here for a second. Now, if I was there in the classroom with you guys, I would be coming around giving you guys lots of assist right now. <laughs> um, so just breathe, inhale and exhale. Good. Inhale and exhale. All right, let's clasp our hands behind our backs and we're gonna come into locust pose. So we're gonna come into locust pose. And then we're gonna point our feet, draw our shoulder blades back, lift, lift, lift for four, lift your head for three, for two and lower down. Good, excellent. Let's take it again. 
Locust pose, so clasp our hands. Lift, lift, lift. Squeeze your glutes. Lift, point your feet for four, three, two, and one. Lower down. Now we're gonna windshield wiper our feet side to side. So windshield wiper your feet side to side. And then we're gonna inhale, upward facing. And then exhale, downward facing dog. And then we're gonna come onto our backs. So just come right onto your back. Good. And we're gonna set up for some bridge poses. So you can take your block and place it underneath your seat. So this is a very nice restorative pose. It's very low um, intensity. So this is a one variation. Another variation is just to shimmy your shoulders underneath your um, back and clasp your hands. And we're gonna lift our pelvis up to the ceiling and squeeze your glutes. So squeeze, 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 and lift, lift, lift. And then lower down. Good. Bridge poses are awesome. Also for just working all the, the thigh muscles, building that lower, lower um, the, the leg strength. And then again, we're gonna lift our pelvis, squeeze your glutes, clasp your hands, lift, lift, lift. And then lower down. And then the last one is wheel, bridge or wheel. So if wheel is not in your practice, no stress. But if you want to go for wheel and you're, you know, feeling confident, it's been a few, you know, a year out or something and you're like ready to party, um, let's go for it. So wheel pose or bridge. Ready? One, two, three. Here we go. For four, for three, for two. And one, lower down, bring your feet together, open your thighs, bring your right hand to your heart, left hand on your stomach, close your eyes. Again, thinking about something you're grateful for. I'm grateful I can do wheel pose. That pose was like impossible after I did my deep. <laughs> and it took a while for that one to work, but it's about a year out from the deep, from actually, it's a little more than that. It's been a while. Um, since my last surgery, so I, I feel confident doing that. Oh yeah, after the brain surgery, that one I couldn't do the deep. So again, think about something you're grateful for. And in this moment, as your hand is on your heart, left hand is on your belly, closing your eyes, being embracing the moment, allowing gravity to do its work by allowing your thighs to melt down. Inhaling and exhaling. And making your way into happy baby. So that means you're gonna be grabbing the bottoms of your feet with your hands and drawing your knees towards the mat. And then extending your legs up to the ceiling. I want you to take that block that you had and I want you to place it underneath your seat. So take that block, place it underneath your seat and extend your legs up to the ceiling. So feeling the blood circulate in an opposite direction. This pose is also wonderful for detoxification. This is also a great pose if you're having trouble sleeping at night or you just did chemo or immunotherapy and you're just having trouble with um, yeah, just rest and relaxation. This is a great pose because it activates your parasympathetic nervous system. So it's a great pose. You can just put your legs up on a wall before bedtime. It's just a great, great pose for releasing and relaxing. And we're gonna remove the block. And we're gonna be setting up for one of our Last poses. So this one is called fish pose. So matrandrasana fish pose. So you're gonna place the block um, or you can take a pillow. So if you don't have a block and you're gonna place it vertically along your back and you're just gonna lower all the way down, all the way down. And you can bring your head, the, the crown chakra all the way on the mat. And you're gonna open up your palms to the ceiling. And you're just gonna close your eyes and feel that wonderful chest opener. 
Again, if this is uncomfortable, if you just had a double mastectomy, you know, don't do this pose. Just lie down. But this is a great pose just to help open up your heart and allow this beautiful the benefit of um, lifting and opening up your heart. I also found that when I did the double mastectomy, when I did the port, um, it, it, it affected my, um, uh, it affected my posture, right? I was hunched over more because I was um, healing. So this is a great pose, post all that, because it helps really open up your chest and it helps reinforce uh, alignment. So you're not hunching over, right? So this is a great pose, wherever, whatever stage you're at, whatever you need to do, take care of yourself. And we're going to remove the block or the pillow, whatever you have underneath your torso and bring your right knee into your chest. Your right knee draws into your chest and then twist over to the left side and extend your right arm to the right side, looking over to the right side. Supine twist. Again, we really focused on twist today uh, because of that detoxification energy and effect. And then draw your knees into your chest, give them a hug and extend your right leg long, draw your left knee into your chest, twist over to your left side, extend your left arm to the left side, inhale, exhale. And come back to center. Take one more hug of gratitude for showing up on your mat this morning or afternoon. And then when you're ready, extend your legs long. We're going to be setting up for a final resting pose. So you might want to, you know, put on your socks or put on a sweater or whatever you need to do to get cozy because we're going to do a, a final meditation here. And I'm going to lead you through a guided, guided meditation that is specific for you cancer goddesses. <laughs> so... So breathing here, inhale, exhale. And I want you to see a light hovering over your whole body, a glorious light hovering over your whole body. And I want this light to represent health, wellness for your cells. So healing energy for your cells, right? Because cancer is a malfunction in the cells. It means the cells are not reproducing properly. So we want to visualize glorious, healthy, white cells entering into our body. Let it come from the bottoms of your feet, from the bottoms of your feet, let that light of cellular energy come to your ankles and then let it go to your knees, to your thighs and to the base of your spine, your root chakra, your pelvis, which we talked about at the beginning of the class, to your sacral chakra. So your sacral chakra is where your feminine organs are. And then from there to your solar plexus, which is right in your belly button, right where your belly button is. And then from there, the light comes to your chest. Let it radiate over your breast and your ribs. And that light comes up through your trachea to your throat, your throat chakra. And that light comes to your shoulders and to your elbows and to your wrist and your hands and it comes right back up to your shoulders to your throat again to your mouth to your lips to your eyes to your eye socket to your eyebrows to your ears all the way to your third eye 
which we talked about, which is the point in between your eyebrows. And that light comes all the way up to the top of your head and that's your crown chakra. Let that light just radiate all that beautiful cellular energy coming out and up, beautiful energy. Connecting you with God, your higher power, the universe, knowing that you are protected, you are secure, no matter what you're going through, you can get through this one day at a time, one breath at a time, one moment at a time, and to not let fear come into your life at all. When fear rears its ugly head, you have the breath and you have your practice to bring you back to the moment. In your final resting pose of Shavasana. Wiggle your fingers and wiggle your hands and make your way onto your side. And then slowly make your way up to a comfortable seated position. Keep your eyes closed and just notice any shifts in your body, any shifts in your mind from the beginning of the practice. And then place your palms over your heart, sending this love and healing energy to yourself, to your cells and to the path ahead of you. The light in me honors the light in you. Namaste. All right, thank you ladies. So good to see you. And um, I know some of you dropped in kind of uh, while we were in mid section. So maybe we can um, introduce yourselves for a second. Um, but before I do that, I'll, I'll stop recording. But I do wanna mention that if you had like specific questions about detox or yoga, um, what to support you during your journey, this is what I love helping women with. So all of you are welcome to a complimentary call anytime. And I'll put my information in the chat so you can make an appointment. But chemo does cause residual cancers and it's really important to flush it out. So there's certain protocols I have that 
can help you do that. And just to get back into optimal health, because when you're going through all that, it's really important to get back. And also like Melissa with the radiation redness, like there's certain things to help with that. So you don't have to suffer in that way. <laughs> so I put my, my link there and def, just set, schedule like a you know 20 minute chat with me and I'm sure it will help you immensely. So I'm just gonna pause that.